Okay. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Wow, what a great crowd. Okay, so let's get started. My name is Eric Conor Vitari. I'm a chief product officer and co founder of Mango Boost. Uh, we're a startup company that offer data processing units or DPU solutions. And today I'm excited to tell you about our solution for uh, inference, training, and storage systems. Standard disclaimer slide. So there's two parts of my talk. The first, uh, I will introduce Mango Boost technology and then our unique approach. And then the second part, uh, you don't have too much time, but I'll go a bit deeper to each one, storage, uh, training, and inference. And I will promise you I will show concrete results, not just marketing. There's a concrete results in here. So let me start with a quick uh, video introduction. So introducing the Mango Boost DPU, our DPU enable faster and scalable data center. The problem we're tackling is the CPU is getting bogged down running this infrastructure software task, right? Uh, managing uh, storage, network, and so on, and it has limited scalability. So there's multiple places our DPU can help. As an example, first is uh, for networking and security. Say you have a web server, application, or compute server, right? Under the hood, if you use a CPU, you still have to run uh, things like TLS, TCP, OVS, your networking and security stack. What we, do, what we do here in our DPU is we offload each of these right, from the infrastructure software to full hardware acceleration in our DPU. That way, CPU is freed up, line rate got improved, uh, and then uh, CPU can also run more application. And then next, of course, is also applicable in AI GPU servers. Right? Uh, in the GPU servers, you have many GPUs packed in the server, usually eight. And we have a GPU boost technology that can uh, help in, uh, in, the, in this kind of uh, uh, you know, uh, setup. So amongst the GPU servers, GPU have to connect it to each other with very high uh, speed network. Usually, you have a lot of uh, you know, one network card per GPU. And then we can replace that with our DPU that is smarter and can accelerate a lot of uh, GPU connectivity, pre-processing, device management function from CPU to our DPU, improving line rate, GPU connectivity, and improving system performance. And next, in terms of storage, right? You have uh, both client and then target, or initiator and target server, right? Initiator, let's say, can run file server, and the storage server, a bunch of SSD. You connect it through Ethernet. And uh, in the baseline case, CPU have to run a bunch of uh, networking stack, right? And VME over fabric storage networking stack. On top of that, there's also storage functions and then virtualization to support. So with our DPU, we offload all this, and then we can accelerate the connectivity across the storage and free up CPU so we can uh, support more virtual machines on the client side. OK, so that's roughly uh, you know, uh, our quick introduction. And then this, let me talk about the technology behind this. Right? What is our unique approach? So uh, on one side here, you see our extensive full hardware acceleration. That's a really unique key here. The reason is uh, to offer DP solution is uh, difficult because there's so many infrastructure functions, right? from networking, storage, virtualization, and so on. So there's so many things to accelerate. And different server also use only different things, right? GPU server, GPU connectivity, storage server, storage connectivity, and so on. So, not, uh, so there's a specific server requires specific acceleration. So in, alternative, in, in uh, other DPU out there, right, uh, they typically have CPU. And you simply run software on the small CPU in the DPU cart. But in our case, we're not doing that. We're actually fully hardware accelerating everything. We still have the CPU for software control and ease of deployment, but all of this function is full hardware acceleration, uh, data path, all processed in hardware. And in the middle part, as you can see, we actually have a, a you know, novel customization technology and expertise across the company, across system stack, to integrate flexibly the different hardware acceleration needed for each of the DPU solutions. So we offer multiple DPU tailored for different uh, you know, type of the market uh, and uh, server types. Right, and then uh, if you go to our boot, our boot is just right there, right behind you, literally. We're actually showing our cards uh, with multiple of our DP solutions uh, integrated in the uh, real servers, right? And then across the AI rack, we go from GPU server, controller server, storage server. And let me tell you a bit more about that. So we're showing um, uh, four things, uh, you know, and you can go to our boot. We have a data sheet. You can also go to our website and download the spec. And I'll tell you more in the second part of this talk, right, about the results from each one of these. But we showcasing a GPU boost, which is a Rocky V2 GPU to GPU connectivity, a network boost, which is full stateful TCP acceleration, right? Unlike alternative solution that only 
do partial TCP acceleration, stateless, not stateful. We do stateful, everything in hardware. And then the, the right part, storage boost, right? We uh, cover both NVMe over uh, fabric on the initiator as well as target side. And this is NVMe over TCP, which is easier to deploy than NVMe over Roki V2. Okay, so let me go over uh, the, a bit more detail on each one of these, and I also give links in the slides, so you can always uh, go to, for more detail. You can also, also find us in our booth. So first of all, you know, just a summary of what I'm going to talk about, right? We have GPU boost, storage boost, and web boost, and what's common among these is that uh, we offer similar, uh, same kind of unifying benefit. All of this is built on top of, uh, you know, easy to deploy industry standard, right? Or ethernet base, you know, uh, TCP and VME, there's all already supported with operating system, right? Your Linux already run this thing in software. But we run it, we put it in hardware, keep the same interface, right? We, we're IBTA compliant, you know, and VME compliant. So all industry standard. We also use standard form factor, PCA based card uh, of multiple form factors available, ready to deploy. Second, again, very high, uh, big emphasis is full hardware acceleration, as I mentioned earlier, right? Uh, not just some software running on small CPU on the card. This is full hardware acceleration. So we can get you know, full line rate, top performance, and lower the TCO. So let me go over each of the uh, solution. So the first one is for AI storage, OK? So if you see there, uh, we zoom in on the GPU connectivity, GPU server, to a storage server, right? Storage server has a bunch of SSD. GPU server has a bunch of GPU. And this is actually applicable even for non-GPU uh, you know, server that connect to storage. But here we have a full solution to enable data path that is uh, going direct from uh, the GPU peer to peer, right, to our uh, 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 DPU on the GPU server side. We call it the NTI or the initiator. And then go to Ethernet and then go to the target. And the target have the you know, multiple SSDs, high bandwidth, high capacity, and our DPU can unlock the full bandwidth of the SSD because we can saturate line rate. And then the technology behind it is NVMe TCP, full offloading. And then one more thing is that on the GPU side, right, our DPU card initiator is actually virtualized. So the, the GPU or the, uh, actually see it as a local PCIe. We do our magic inside uh, the, our NTI card so that it can actually go over the network. But it's presented to the system as a normal just NVMe PCI local device. OK, so let me uh, show you uh, one result. First result here um, is really uh, from MLPerf storage. If you're following, MLPerf storage just got published officially like two or three weeks ago. And then we actually submitted our official result. It's part of the results. You can go to their, their site and see the numbers. Uh, and this is uh, basically a standard AI benchmark from MLPerf, right? Uh, specifically for measuring storage performance to support AI training cluster. Basically, the benchmark quantify the number of accelerators that uh, you can support, your storage system can support. The, the more performance, higher throughput you can, storage can support, the more GPU or accelerators you can support, right? So that's kind of the metric that's, uh, that's, uh, that's measured. And then uh, among all the submissions from LPERF storage, there's already two rounds. This is a V1.0, and there's another one before that. Actually, we're the first to submit a system with DPU acceleration in it. Uh, so we're the industry first DPU result for MLPerf storage there. And then uh, there's a lot of results. There's a lot of, lots of strong submission, right? Uh, there's 32 other submissions we can compare against. We are submitting an internet-based system. Remember, our technology is based on internet. And then uh, on the figure there, on the right, you, we, we compare our performance normalized against all the average of other submission. We're actually the best performing system uh, for the ether, among the other uh, systems that does Ethernet, right? And then for simplicity, we average it, uh, but we're about 4x better on average compared to the other 32 other submissions. And then you can see the detail, obviously, raw data. And then the bottom link, we also show um, our blog article, they do a bit more analysis. You know, obviously, we can uh, discuss more with you on the, on the, on the detail here. But uh, so the DPU really does help, right? This full-day hardware acceleration, much higher, right? The 4x improvement. That, that, is, uh, that is really, uh, really compelling, right? So next result, we actually presented this in uh, uh, SDC, SNIA, last month. And this is co-presented with a partner from AMD. Uh, with a, uh, we showcase our technology running on MI300X GPU servers with our DPU uh, storage boost. And we're running a Llama 370 billion model uh, on a deep speed software from Microsoft Open Source, right? And uh, on a, you know, a state of the art AMD MI300 GPU uh, where we go to storage server. So the deep speed allows offloading some of the uh, working set, uh, you know, weights and so on, activation to the storage. And we, 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 we use that. 
And you can go to the detail if you're interested. You can look at the talk. I give the talk there and the link there. But as a summary, you know, uh, using our DPU, we can speed up the uh, improve the performance of the data uh, the, the data movement bandwidth by 1.7x. Again, uh, compelling uh, improvement. We also free up a lot of the CPU, 47%, you know, right? Uh, 20 CPU or so. Um, Okay, so now let's go to the next subsystem, uh, which is AI training. And right? everybody uh, loves tra training these days, a lot of uh, models being produced. So in the GPU training, you have to uh, connect a bunch of GPU servers together, right? A popular approach is going over Ethernet Roki V2. So that's really the solution that we have here, right? Uh, so the Roki V2 we have is you know, compliant with the standard Roki. But one thing I want to mention is uh, it's full in hardware, and uh, we also offer customization. So if you want custom congestion control, custom header, right? We can do it at the hardware speed because our hardware is programmable and customizable, and we actually have a placeholder to put the customization on there. So unlike uh, uh, the approach where maybe the, cust uh, the custom congestion control actually running just on a software, on an ARM core or something like that, we actually put it, in, uh, we can put it in hardware for you, right? So that way is actually very, very optimal. And of course, uh, very important, um, Ultra Ethernet is also going to be supported coming up and so, uh, to be available. Right? So we've been a member, and then we've been uh, working uh, heavily to support Ultra Ethernet as well. So any of you interested, please you know, contact us. We'll be happy to talk to you about Ultra Ethernet DPU as well. So the uh, so result summary here is just a quick one. Right? So we test the scalability of our solution. So on one side, we're showing the uh, Q pair scalability. The more GPU you have in the cluster, the more Q pairs you need, right, for GPU connectivity. Uh, the, so as we scale of our, uh, uh, you know, with increasing number of Q pairs up to 2K in this uh, figure, you can see uh, we actually compare against other vendors, uh, RDM and NIC. They're actually going down after 512. While for us, we can keep close to line rate even at, at 2K Q pairs. And on the other side, it's just showing an increasing number of GPU throughput is maintained and scale accordingly. OK, so the last part is inference, right? For inference, we actually have two solutions we want to highlight. The first one is Web Boost. This is accelerating web serving. You're usually the front end cluster uh, of your inference. So you need to accept web requests, right, to go to your inference uh, uh, backend. So here we can uh, accelerate the web serving. Second one is LM Boost, which is uh, you know uh, is actually software system system software solution to manage your LM inference servers and to make it easy to productize it. So let me first talk about uh, Web Boost. So here you know we take a popular engine X, you know it can be any web server, and we couple that with our full TCP acceleration, right? The Web Boost uh, you know a DPU acceleration hardware, and our hardware is presented under normal POS6. API, so it's very easy to integrate. And here we integrate with Nginx, and then we evaluate the performance of Nginx on, uh, software only versus, versus our DPU acceleration. And we show actually 2x throughput improvement at the at overall Nginx level. And then latency also cut by almost half. Right? So that's, the, that's again uh, the power of the full hardware acceleration. And then the next solution is for um, AI inference serving. So this is a system software, right, uh, that allows us to, uh, you know, manage a bunch of, uh, you know, instances of uh, inference. In this case, we're using VLLM. And I want to mention this is very turnkey. Uh, for example, a lot of people know about VLLM and they like to use it. VLLM support, you know, major uh, GPU vendors, right? But to deploy it, uh, you would need more features. For example, web API. And also, if you want to scale the more GPU, usually you have uh, multiple GPU in a box now then you would need more ways to extract parallelism out of it, data parallelism, combination with tensor parallelism, and so on and so forth. So VLM doesn't support all the parallelism, so we added uh, LM Boost that can couple with VLM, so we can handle smartly the you know, scheduling and data parallelism, combination with uh, tensor parallelism, to improve performance when you scale across multiple GPUs in the server, for inference, right? Um, so we see, we're showing here, you know, it's, a, it's a presented as Docker container, where it's very easy to deploy. And then in terms of performance, we're showing you the results there. Uh, comparing against standard VLLM, you know, this is the AMD MI300X uh, GPU again, and there's an uh, optimal VLLM from AMD that we use as a baseline. And when we scale to eight GPUs, right, we combine the parallelism, the sensor parallelism with our LLM boost software, performance improved by five to six X. Okay, I have 10 seconds, so I'm gonna just do quickly on the last one. Our boot is just right there, the, 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 the mango boost, you can see it from here. 
And then we have uh, our solutions presented there. We're also accepting pre-orders, you know, and you can see our cards and our servers there. Uh, please come visit us, and you know, feel free to talk to me uh, after this as well. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs>